Hi, second graders, and thank you for joining me for skills again today. Um, I know that I'm a new face to a lot of you guys, but just a reminder, my name is Miss Catrone, and I teach at the Citizenship Academy in Syracuse. So um, as you guys know, yesterday we started Skills Unit 4, and I told you a little bit about how we're going to be practicing a lot of new sounds, how we're going to be learning some new grammar, we're going to be reading a new story, and I have all of that packed in our lesson for today. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you so we can jump right in. Now, if you remember from yesterday, I said that I think it's really important to start all of our lessons with some goals. That way we know what we're going to try to know at the end of the lesson. So the first one of our goals or our learning targets for today says, I can identify, that just means I can find them, proper nouns and common nouns. So we're going to practice what is a proper noun, what is a common noun, and then how do I find which one is which? We'll practice that today. Our learning goal number two says, I can sort words with the different spellings for the er sound. So just a little bit of a reminder, yesterday we looked at the er sounds and we knew that they were spelled <clears throat> with I-R, U-R, or E-R, but they all have that same er sound. So we're gonna practice that a little bit more today. And then lastly, I can ask and answer questions about key details in the story morning. So we're going to be reading a story from our reader today. The title of the story is Morning, and you're going to be able to ask and answer some questions about that. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be able to identify or find common and proper nouns. So we've been learning about nouns, right? We've been learning about them a lot in second grade. What is a noun? Hmm? A noun can be a person, a place, or a thing. Great job. So a noun is a part of speech that names a person and a thing. can also name a place. All right, so repeat after me. Big book. Which word is the noun? Remember, a noun is a person, a place, or a thing. So which one is the noun? Great job if you said book. Book is a thing, so that would make that one the noun. All right, let's do it again. Repeat after me. Small school. Your turn. Okay, which word is the noun? School, great job. School is the place. Awesome job if you said school. All right, we're gonna do this again. Um, you're gonna repeat after me. Birds singing. Okay, so which word is the noun? Birds the noun or singing the noun? Hmm, I'll give you a think, some think time. Birds. If you said birds, that is the noun because that is a thing. So we said that nouns can be a person, a place, or a thing. That one's the thing. <clears throat> okay, so these are all what we would call common nouns. Common nouns means it can be any um, igloo, any girl, or any hand. Okay, we're not talking about one specific one. I'm just talking about any of them. Doesn't, doesn't matter which one. If I'm I'm not talking about the igloo in Alaska on the corner where the polar bear lives. I'm not talking about that specific one. I'm just talking about any igloo. Okay, so we have common nouns, which um, are anybody, anything, but we also have proper nouns. Now, proper nouns are when you're talking about one specific person, one specific place, or one specific thing. So I'll read this to you. Proper nouns are called proper because, oopsies, because they name someone or something specific. So this is a proper noun because this is a picture of Florence Nightingale. Now I'm not talking about any girl, I'm talking about that specific girl. Okay, 
listen to these two nouns. And I want you to think about which one refers to a specific person. So we have Jane and we have girl. Jane or girl. Which refers to a specific person? It's Jane. Jane is a proper noun because it names a specific person. So she's a specific person. That's the girl we're talking about, Jane. Alrighty. So everybody, whether you're at your house, in your backyard, outside, everybody it has a proper noun. And that is your name. When I say your name, you know that you're that specific person. I'm talking to you. Just like if you say my name, Miss Catrone, I am a specific person. I'm a proper noun. If you just say teacher, you could be talking about any old teacher. I wouldn't know that you're talking about me. That's why you're going to say Miss um, Catrone and I'm the proper noun. Not everyone has this name, so we'll know who we're talking about. So if I say girl, I can be talking about any girl that's watching this right now. I can be talking about just any girl. But if I say your name, then I'm talking to you. You're the proper noun. Same thing with the boys. If I just say boy, I could be talking to any boy who's watching my video. But if I say your name, you know that you're the proper noun. And I'm talking to you. Proper nouns help us identify specific people or things. So instead of just saying boy, I know that this boy's name is Blake. Instead of just saying Katie, I know that this girl is Katie. That's like if I was trying to give someone directions to the school. I could say, yeah, it's on the street. You know, the street, that, the street. That would take that person a really long time to find this school. But if I tell them the name of this, the name of this street, that specific street, it helps them know exactly where they're going. Okay, so we're gonna play a game. I'm gonna call out a word. If it's a common noun, any old noun, you're gonna show me a one, one finger. But if it's a proper noun, you're gonna show me two fingers, okay? So if, if I'm the example, if I just say teacher, you're gonna give me a one. I'm a common noun. We don't know who I'm talking about, teacher. But if you, I say Miss Catrone, that's a two. I'm a proper noun, the specific teacher, right? Teacher, Miss Catrone, that's how I know you're talking about me. All right, here we go. So, <clears throat> man. Is man a common noun or a proper noun? Let's check your answers. Alrighty, you guys should have put common noun. I'm not, I don't know what man I'm talking about. I'm talking about any old man. All right, next one. Kid. Is kid a common noun or a proper noun? I'll give you some think time. Kid is a common noun. I don't say I'm talking about Jamie. I just said I'm talking about the kid. It could be any kid. All right, state. Is state a common noun or a proper noun? Hmm. State is a common noun. I could be talking about any state. We live in New York state. New York state is a specific one. All right, Yankee Stadium. Is Yankee Stadium a cop? Excuse me, a common noun or a proper noun? It's a proper noun because I know exactly what baseball stadium you're talking about. You're talking about Yankee Stadium. All right, park. Park a common noun or a proper noun? Park is a common noun. I don't say I'm going to Sunflower Park. I say I'm going to the park. You don't know which one. All right, mall. Common noun, proper noun. Hmm. That one's gonna be a common noun. I don't tell you what mall it is, it's any mall. Yellowstone Park, common or proper? That one's gonna be a proper noun, I know noun, because I know exactly which 
park you're talking about. All right, Lakeside Shopping Center. Common or proper? That one's gonna be a proper noun because I know exactly what shopping center or mall you're talking about. All right, New York. New York. Common noun or proper noun? That one's a proper noun because I know what specific state you're talking about. Michael Phelps. Is Michael Phelps a common noun or a proper noun? He is a proper noun. He is an Olympic swimmer, and I know exactly which person you're talking about. Alrighty. So as part of your Google form at the end of this, I'm gonna have you tell me an example of a common noun and an example of a proper noun. So you can be thinking of those throughout the rest of the lesson. Okay. So yesterday in our skills lesson, we started practicing this, song, this sound, er, er. I am going to um, switch my screen and we're gonna hear that sound again. And we're going to watch the video and the song again, because if you're anything like my second graders from last year, they loved this. Alrighty, I just got to switch it. So thank you so much for being patient with me. Here we go. So I look for er. There we go. Er. 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 Tiger. Er. Tiger. Er. Tiger. Let's say it together. Er. 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 Tiger. Tiger. Er. Er. Tiger. Tiger. Er. Er. Awesome job. And last but not least, we can listen to the song. Er. Tiger in the jungle, bigger striped dog and fur. I have never heard a tiger make a ferocious purr. Tiger, it's fine, you can roar if you prefer. Er, er, tiger. Awesome. All right, that was fun. Let's go back. Um, and we're going to practice more of those er sounds together. Ooh, in the word together, at the end, I hear that er sound. All righty, guys. Okay, so we have this er spelled E-R. When I see it spelled E-R, I see the power bar, remember, is really long, which means I'm going to see that pretty often. I'm going to see that the er sound spelled E-R a lot. I can also see er spelled U R like right here on my sound card. The U R says er in the word hurt. Can you guys practice saying the word hurt? Good job. Now in this one, the power bar is not as long. See how it's kind of shorter? That means I'm not going to see it as much. Next, I have the er sound spelled with I R. If I look at my sound card, Er, I R says er in the word bird. Hear that er sound in the word bird? Why don't you practice saying it? Bird. Good job. Okay, so here we have a chart. And in my chart, I have listed some words that have the er sound. So when I see this E R, I see it in clerk. Clerk is someone who um, might ring out your groceries at the grocery store, and then you'll pay the clerk. I see verb. Remember, verb is an action word. Fern, servant, pattern, modern, interest, interest. 
Now in this column, I have words that say the er sound with the ur spelling, like hurt, fur, curb, sunburn, murder, disturb, surrender, surrender. And lastly, I have words um, that say the er sound with this ir spelling, like bird, fur, first, stir up, blackbird, and squirrel. So all of these words have the er sound, even though they're spelled different ways. Okay, so we were talking about our spelling tree and we can add some more words to our spelling tree. Now, I know that in your other units, you guys have been practicing um, reading in your readers and we get to start a brand new reader today. We're gonna read a story called Morning. Now, our reader for this unit is called The Job Hunt. So we're gonna start a new reader today about a girl named Kim. Now, if the title of my reader, I just told you, is called The Job Hunt, what do you think our main character, Kim, might be doing? Hmm, what might she be doing in the reader, The Job Hunt? Um, she may be, be looking for a job, right? All right, <clears throat> so this is a book about a girl named Kim and Kim is looking for a job. Now, she's going to be looking through the job opening sections of the newspaper. So if, you, if you've ever seen a newspaper, there's a page and it's all the job opening. And that is where a business will write in and tell the reader or the world, whoever's reading the newspaper, that they have an opening for a job. So that's where Kim starts looking for her job. Now, Kim lives in Brooklyn, and Brooklyn is a borough of New York City, so it's a part of New York City. That's where Kim lives. Kim is looking for a summer job with her younger brother, Kurt. Oh, and this word, Kurt, I see this er sound with you are. Did anybody else spot that? Kurt has my er sound. So she, Kurt is going with her on her job hunt. So we're going to open the, um, I'm going to switch over and we're going to open to the table of contents. But before we do that, this is an actual map of the subway routes in New York City. Now, subways are, um, they're really trains that go underground and they're a way of public transportation. So that's what people can use to get around New York City. They're typically found in large cities. So we're we'll be looking at that today. Kim and Kurt are going to take the subway to get around New York City. When I visit New York City, I take the subway as well. I actually have a card that, um, that you have to pay to, to ride on the subway. Okay, so trains usually run underground in tunnels, although sometimes the trains run above ground on an elevated platform, or this is called a platform where you would get on and off. Okay, so there are five boroughs in New York City. We said that Kim lives in Brooklyn, but there's also Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, and Staten Island. Maybe you guys have visited there, or maybe you have family that lives in any of these boroughs in New York City. Okay, so we're gonna go to the table of contents and we're gonna read the first story, which is going to be um, the morning. But before we do that, we're gonna look at some vocabulary. Now, reading is a really great way that we can learn new words and we can learn their meanings. So let's go over it before we start. Okay, so we're gonna look at some, some new things today. We're gonna look at college. Now, um, you guys are in elementary school and then you'll go to middle school and then high school. And then if you wanna keep um, learning more and more to get you ready for a specific job, you might go to college. This is a picture of a college. The next word we're gonna go over is the word whale. Now, 
you might notice by the picture that I'm not talking about the big sea creature whale. This is a word that means crying. It's a synonym. It means the same thing as to cry or to wail. And the next thing we're going to be learning about is slacks. We are going to hear that Kim is going to wear some slacks. Those are just a pair of pants. All right, two more things. We have a fair card. I have this card at my house too. It's a metro card. It's what you put money on to be able to ride the subway. Or you might pay with cash. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and we're gonna review some words that I'm gonna see there with the er sound. So when I see er, I see gunter, butter, summer, paper, sister. With the ir, I see shirt and first. With the ur, I see curt and burst. Because we've been looking at these uh, er words, I want you to look for them in our readers, okay? See if you can spot any. All right, here's some other big words that we're gonna see. Multi-syllable means that there are two different syllables in the words, or more, two or more. So we have the word college, 19, opening, explained, and subway. It's good to look at these words before we get started, so when we read, we can read um, fluently. That means really without stopping. All right, so today as we read the morning together, we're going to read to find out why Kim wants to get a summer job. Why does she need a summer job? We're going to read together. I'm going to switch my screen over to our reader in just a moment. All righty. Okay, so let's find out about Kim and Kurt and their hunt for a summer job. All right, so here we have the cover of our book is called The Job Hunt, The Job Hunt. Here's our table of contents. You'll find table of contents at the beginning of most books and it tells you what page each chapter is on. Today we're gonna be reading Morning. I follow this line all the way over. I know that Morning starts on page four. <clears throat> and here we have that map of the subway trains that we looked at just a little bit before. Alrighty, so I'm going to be reading to you today and you can actually take your finger and follow along as I say the words because that's going to help you become a stronger reader. <clears throat> as you're pointing, you can say the words and read along with me too. Here we go. Morning. It was morning. Kurt Gunter was in the kitchen with his big sister, Kim. Kurt placed some butter on his toast. Kim glanced at the papers and ate some toast. Kurt was seven. His sister, Kim, was 19. She was home from college for the summer. <clears throat> what are you doing? Kurt asked. I'm looking in today's paper at the job opening ads, Kim said. Why? I need a summer job, Kim explained. Why do you need a job? So I can make some cash. Remember, if we looked at our vocab, we saw that cash was paper money that you hold on to. All right, so here in our picture, we can always use our picture clues to help us um, get a a visual of the story. So we have Kurt eating his toast with his butter on it. Kim is looking through the job openings. Remember we said that job openings are where businesses will post available jobs that people can apply for. All right, here we go. What will you do with your cash? Asked Kurt. I'll save most of it, said Kim, but I'll spend some on things I need, like clothing and I would like to get a bike. You can get a bike if you get a job? Yes. Kurt sat thinking of how much fun it would be to ride bikes with Kim. Cool, so what sort of job will you get? Kurt asked. I can't tell, that's why I'm looking at the paper. Kurt ate some toast. Then he asked, should I get a job too? Kim smiled. You are just seven, she said. You don't need to get a job yet. You should be having fun. 
but I would like one, Kurt wailed. Wailed is like he cried. Remember that vocab word? But I would like one, kind of crying it out. I'll tell you what, Kim said. You can help me look for a job. If you see a job you like, then you can get that job when you are my age. All right, so here we have Kurt um, imagining him and Kim riding bikes together. Because we know that she wants to save money for a bike. She doesn't have one yet. That sounds good, Kurt said. When she finished reading the ads, Kim went and got dressed. She dressed in her best slacks. Ooh, slacks. We look at that vocab word. That means pants. They're a fancy pair of pants. And a crisp white shirt. Why are you all dressed up? asked Kurt. It helps to dress up when you go looking for a job, Kim explained. Should I dress up too? Just slip on a pair of nice shorts, she told him. Kurt ran off and got a pair of shorts. Would you say this pair of shorts is nice? He asked. Those will do, said Kim. Then Kim went to see her mom. Okay, if we look at our picture clues, we see Kim getting dressed in her nice slacks and Kurt showing off his nice shorts. Alrighty, we're gonna get started again. So if you're following along, make sure you get your finger ready to point along with the words that I'm reading. <clears throat> All set for the job hunt, Mrs. Gunter asked with a smile. Kim nodded. You look nice. Did you check to see if it will rain? It's not going to rain, but it's going to be hot. Okay, here's a fair card for the subway, said Mrs. Gunter. And here's some cash to pay for lunch and snacks. Call me if there's a problem. Thanks, Mom, Kim said. Kurt burst into the room. Mom, I'm going to get a job too, he shouted. Mrs. Gunter said, your job is first to do what Kim says and then to be good while she looks for a job. Yes, Mom, said Kurt. Then Mrs. Gunter spoke to Kim. Keep your chin up. Use your best manners. Smile and let them see how smart you are. That will help you get a job. As they went out, Kurt asked, where are we going? Kim said, just stay with me. Alrighty guys, that is the end of our story, The Morning. And I'm gonna switch back over and we're gonna go over some questions together. So if you remember, one of our goals is that we'll be able to ask and answer questions about that story. All right, there we are. Okay, who is older, Kim or Kurt? We know that Kim is older. Remember, it, the reader said that she is 19 and Kurt is seven. Where has Kim been before summertime? We know that Kim was in college. Question two, why does Kim want to get a summer job? Why does Kim want to get a summer job? We know that Kim wants to make some money. She's gonna save most of it, <clears throat> but she wants to be able to buy a bike and some clothing. When Kurt says he wants to get a job too, what does Mrs. Gunter tell him that his job is? Hmm. If we don't remember, we can go back to our story. That's what good readers do. They go back to the story. Let's see. Let's practice going back to our story. Okay. So here we have on page 11, <clears throat> Kurt burst into the room. Mom, I'm going to get a job too, he shouted. Mrs. Gunter said, your job is first to do what Kim says and then to be good while she looks for a job. All right, we're going to switch back. 
So when Kurt says that he wants a job too, what does Mrs. Gunter tell him that his job is? It's to do what Kim says and help be good while she looks for a job. Ooh, what advice does Mrs. Gunter give Kim about hunting for a job? What advice does she give her? Hmm. She tells her to keep her chin up, use her manners, smile, show them how smart she is. Those are all great pieces of advice from her mom. <clears throat> what words would you use to describe Kurt? Remember, describing words lets people know what that person is like. Is he tall or short? Is he silly or serious? Is he funny or calm? What words would you use? Hmm. I think he's kind of hyper. He has a lot of energy. <clears throat> what words would you use to describe Kim? I think Kim is responsible because she's looking for a job. Alrighty. <clears throat> That's going to be the end of your video for today. Remember, at the end of the lesson, you are going to have a Google form to fill out, so don't forget to do that. But before we go, let's check back into our goals. Did we meet our goals for today? I can identify proper nouns and common nouns. Yeah, we did that. Remember, a common noun is just any person, place, or thing, like teacher. A proper noun is a specific person, place, or thing, like Miss Catrone. All right, two, I can sort words with different spellings for the er sound. Remember, we looked at a lot of different words with the er sound. We saw words that used er to say er, like her. Words that used ur to say er, like hurt. And lastly, words that used IR to say er, like bird. We looked at all of those today. So yep, check for that one too. Lastly, I can ask and answer questions about key details in the story morning. We just got finished looking at all those questions in the story morning. That's gonna be a big check for that one too. You guys have done an awesome job for skills today. Don't forget to do the Google form at the end. I've had a great time teaching you and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.